He turns, a case of beer looking puny in his hands. He's flushed, clearly already drunk. You both lock eyes. Are you serious? Because I'm vegetarian? <laughs> Don't you love me? Why did you think that? Hi everybody, I'm Degenerate, and welcome to Lover's Trophy. Now, I should say welcome back to Lover's Trophy, but it's not on the channel now, is it? <coughs> no, it's not. You know, I actually recorded this before I recorded Court and Cowboys, <gasps> if you can believe it. Mm. Um. <laughs> the recording messed up. I never learn. I thought I did, but I don't. Um, but yes, I did record this before Court and Cowboys, so I knew who Jack was, but overall, I didn't know who he was in the game, how he acted in the game. I'm gonna assume they act exactly the fucking same. Obviously, the what's your name thing, yeah, we know. The ending I got was stupid. We just ended up just being in the cage. The case that we're going to see later. So yes, the way that we initiate this is by going to the gas station, obviously. So this is exactly where we're gonna start. This time I'm gonna make sort of better choices. I I didn't play afterwards when I messed up the recording. I just stopped because I got so upset. So we're starting right from here. You decide to go to the gas station for snacks. Might as well put those last couple dollars to use. We have zero monies. You exit the motel and walk across the street and down the block, noticing the small town of Little Rock. Not exceptionally busy this day. Here, this beautiful gas station. Tibby's? What does that say? I try to read the snacks. Steak and taters. Very country. Because yes, what I did first, I went to the gas station. I didn't want to go to the park. This is the gas station slash convenience store of Little Rock. This place is probably one of the the only things here that is constantly updated. Mainly because of corporate greed. And our lack of major grocery store. You used to live here as a kid, but this is the first time you've been back in a long while. So this is our, our childhood home. Hell, you practically don't recognize the place. So many new brands, new lighting, even a new clerk. So many brands and snacks catch your eye, and you aren't sure what to get. A particular brand of lollipops catches your eye. You grab a box and then head towards the drinks. While inside the gas station, you notice a pretty empty- it's, it's pretty empty except someone looking around a beer cooler. He's large, towering over you from even this distance. He turns, a case of beer looking puny in his hands. He's flushed, clearly already drunk. You both lock eyes. Now. He does not look very big in this little thing here. I must be real tiny if I think he's that big. The 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 spills on the shirt, they gotta go. Oh hey. He seems a little startled by you, but happy nonetheless. I haven't seen you around here before. What's your name, sugar? <laughs> the pet name is strange to hear, especially regarding someone like you. What did I say the first time? I was like shy, right? I'm gonna be surprised. Oh, uh, what's yours? You, you don't really know how to react. A handsome stranger asking your name. Still a stranger, no less. He laughs a little as if he's amused by you. Jack, without the C. Though I do hope this to see you later. He gives you a flirtatious wink. You don't seem to recognize him at all. What's yours? Degenerate. What a cute name. Totally. He enters the empty checkout line, pausing and turning to you. He seems to give it you an intrigued look, eyes eating you up. He seems to be deciding something before he speaks. 
You take this opportunity to enter the empty checkout line behind him. He turns to the counter instead. Here, just the beer and whatever the person behind me wants as well. He beams, looking at you with a flushed expression. You're honestly quite surprised. Speak with admiration and shock. Admiration. No. Shock. Oh, you, you didn't have to do that. You look at the cluster of small snacks and the bottle of soda in your grip. With some quick maths, you realize without his help, you probably wouldn't have had enough to pay for this. You feel grateful. I did, otherwise I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Totally. He pulls out what looks to be a large wad of ones, placing it on the counter. He gives you a small wave before heading out, making sure to stuff a couple of those bills into the tip jars. Keep your chin up, I promise things will get better. Why? It's like he knows I have no money. I was sharing. You check out your snacks, still a bit enamored by the situation. The gas station attendant seems unfazed by your goofy expression. He hands you the grocery bag, and you look at your snacks with excitement. Maybe things aren't at all, aren't all that bad. Thank you. You turn and head out the gas station. Where should you go to enjoy your snacks? Let's just go back to the motel room, get the show on the road, shall we? You decide to go back to the motel to eat in the comfort of your own home with the mildew and cockroaches as your company. Lovely. You head through the lobby and up the fire escape to your room. Fire escape. This place is just so dingy. Once inside, you take a seat on your bed. Where will I sleep tonight? <laughs> you ask this in the middle. You ask this to the bag of cheesy poofs in your grip. You begin to ponder what to do with the rest of your time here in the motel. While you eat your snacks and drink your soda, you can't help but feel as though you're being watched. You feel a shiver run up your spine as you stare at the door. The fuck? Is someone trying to break in? You drop your snacks, you need to make a decision fast. I am going to look at the people. You see a max man carrying a duffel bag. He seems to be rummaging through it, grabbing what seems to be a crowbar. You can only watch in horror as he moves to pry open your door. Find a weapon. You look around frantically for- this is different. Like, I'm not going- I'm not going down easy this time. No. Because last time I hid under the bed. Or no. The first thing I do is try to run out. Then I hid under the bed. Yeah. Because I obviously got caught and then I went back and tried to hide under the bed and I still got caught. You look around frantically for a weapon, but Cheesy Poofs and Mountain Dude- Don't? Are all you see. Shit, he seems to be breaking down the door. You grab the closest thing to you, which happens to be a motel coffee mug. The door bursts open when you're somewhat- but you're somewhat prepared. The coffee mug slams into him and you strike him in the mask. He doesn't budge. Cause he's big. He reeks of alcohol as he grabs you with a strong arm. Shh, calm down, love. It'll be so worth it for the both of us. He knocks the mug from your hand. Bite him. Do everything you can. <laughs> you bite his arm hard, teeth feeling strange against his thin jacket. He lets out a grunt of surprise or pain. You can't really tell. Please, Degenerate, it pains me to see you so unhappy. This- I, I don't need your help. I'm poor, but I'll get over it. He pushes something against your nose. Oh, I forgot about this. The note here at the bottom. It says, I see you. It stinks. Stinky... What? Bro. <laughs> it's chloroform. In the darkness, you can't comprehend what is happening to you. Anything could be happening. What if he's taking your organs to, for the black market? Or you're going to be someone's lunch? All these things run through your mind, and you find it hard to focus on waking up. I already know what happens when you attack him, so... And I found out he has a gun. For some reason, though, we can't use it. <laughs> Where am I? You can't seem to keep your eyes open. You're so tired. Your eyelids feel so heavy. You strain your eyes, but manage to keep them open. The fuck? You're in some kind of unfamiliar bedroom. It smells. Surprisingly not bad. You attempt to move, but your hands are held together with duct tape. 
we attempt to get free and we actually do get free. So. You squirm a bit, attempting to wiggle your hands free. Luckily, you're prone to hand sweat. And you manage to get out of your bounds. Search for a weapon? Search for a weapon. You slowly get up from where you're sitting. You notice the tape was connected to the to a closet door. The bedroom is small. A bed in the corner, a dresser with stickers on it. It's too normal. There's posters from movies on the wall and what looks to be a corkboard above a computer desk. There's no windows to escape from. You look around quietly for a weapon in the dark. After a moment, you come across a pencil on the desk. Better than nothing. A noise can be heard from outside the bedroom door. You quickly walk back to your seat, slipping your hands behind your back, hiding the pencil under your butt as you sit. You hear footsteps. The door opens and someone walks inside. Hey you, you're awake! It's the guy from the gas station. I'm glad too, I was worried for a bit there. He's holding a plate of some food. You're a feisty one. You gulp. I like that. We do not care. Oh no. He crouches in front of you, still extremely tall. Ask him why he's doing this. Why are you doing this? He gives you a dopey little smile, like he's in love. Well, I just knew I had to have you as soon as I laid eyes on you. I've come to the conclusion that taking matters into my own hands tends to do better than if I let them go on their own. That's how small little sigh as if he's had to explain this a few times. This is the easiest way to make sure that you're mine. Your nose picks up on the aroma coming from the plate in his grip. It's a bit dark, but you think you can make out chicken tenders on a plate. Maybe some packets of sauce on the side? And fries. Your stomach rumbles with antip anticipation. Jack watches you before taking a seat crisscross in front of you. He seems eager to feed you. Are you hungry? I don't know what you like yet. And I'll admit I'm not the best cook. It's true. But these foods seem pretty safe. He sort of shrugs. What's the point in saying I'm a vegetarian? What's that gonna do? I'm gonna do it anyway. You shake your head. I can't eat that. Why not? He looks it over, trying to see if there's anything wrong with it in the dark. I'm vegan. Chicken tenders aren't vegan? N no, you dumb- You dumb? He looks disappointed. Oh. Hmm. He reaches for you, setting the plate down and picking you up. This isn't gonna work out. What? Struggle. You struggle in his grip, but his arms are tight around you. You know, I'm sorry, this isn't gonna work. He laughs awkwardly. Maybe we need to see new people? You kidnapped me! He practically has to drag you when he takes you through his house. Then he opens the back door. There's what looks to be a pallet and a tarp? He drags you toward it. This is completely new to me. What's happening? Your legs drag along the dirt and dead grass. You're slipping as you're held against his stomach. You can feel him breathe against you. He hoists you up then drops you onto the ground. Ow! He rolls his eyes before hoisting, hoisting up the pallet and tarp with one hand. The stench is what hits you first. Then you feel a broad boot against your back. What? You kicked hard, falling deep into the pit. It stinks really bad. Something sharp shoved onto your side. You, Your hand seems to be covered in something. Oh god. You look up. He stares down at you with a sick look. Compost! Down in this rotten pile of corpses. Then without a word, he lets the pallet fall. Are you serious? Because I'm vegetarian? <laughs> I cannot believe this man. It's- it's super flabbergasting, really. So we're gonna do with the same thing we did. But instead, eat the food. Just... yeah. I'm gonna eat your dumb chicken tenders. Or... not even. Deny it. You shake your head. Oh, that's fine. I wouldn't want to taste it- to waste it, though. He begins to eat, opening up a packet of ranch and setting it to the side. Then dips a tender in and eats. Your stomach rumbles, but you're determined to keep your sanity. You don't want to give this creep any satisfaction. 
I think you're missing out. I haven't used the air fryer. That thing is really fancy. It chimes all happy when it's all done. He's so happy, you wonder if he's... If he ever has an off switch. He seems amused by every little thing. I mean, hell, even as you're having this eternal monologue, he's rambling on about how he's only ever used a microwave. It's strange. He also seems to eat rather quick because the plate is empty aside the sauce packets. There we go. Now, I was thinking we could go watch a movie. I don't know what you like, but I was thinking we could browse and find something we'd both enjoy. He says this. Yet, his actions later contradict all of that. He's acting like we've been dating for years. Uh... No. What's wrong with him? You stay quiet. Hmm. He reaches for you, picking you up over his shoulder. You can only wiggle with your hands tied. It doesn't seem to bother him, though. You're taken through the hallway, brought to his living room. You look around, and then he pats a large cage next to the sofa. It's huge, probably meant for a large dog. Oh. Oh no. It's for me. Come on, in you go. Before you have a chance to struggle or fight back, he hoists you up. Pushes you into the cage. With quickness, he slams the door shut, locking it with the padlock. There you go, that wasn't so hard, right? How could it be hard? He was the one who threw you in here. He looks at you, seeming to be, to be making mental decisions in real life. He leans, sitting on the sofa to your right. From from the view, you can't see him very well. And the bars are in, are in the way of the TV. He turns it on, looking through what looks like... Looks to be a drive he is connected to his TV. Does he get his movies illegally? He puts on a comedy, reaching for his table and grabbing what looks to be a cigarette. Oh, it's a blunt. You take a deep breath, trying to figure out why it doesn't smell bad in here. If he openly smokes pot in here, why? You hear a shuffle as he opens a window to your right. You're startled by the fact that it's now night. How long have you been here? He smokes watching the TV. The TV that's not on? What do you do? You decide to look over the cage for any weak spots, but your hands are still taped behind your back. Your knees begin to ache from the bars at the bottom, biting into them. This is torture. Mental torture. You're being kept in some sickle's living room. Oh shit. He seems startled. Not good. He turns to you, scooting up to the end of the couch. You can smell it from here. What? His farts? Just him in general? He offers it to you. What? Holding it next to the right bars of the cage. Want some? No way. No way. He seems positively zooted, but still kind enough to ask. What is this supposed to do? I'm gonna take it. Sure. Fuck it. You might as well smoke some weed before he does whatever he plans to do with you. He makes it so if you were to put your lips between the bars, you could get a puff. You do so, taking a drag. He pulls it away, watching as you cough. Easy there. You can't tell if... The pet name is sincere or not. He said honey. I don't... <laughs> he settles back down on the sofa, comfortable as he unpauses his movie. At first you thought he was watching... What he was watching was really stupid. But the pot must have cleared your mind of the fog, which made you feel that way. If you weren't sitting hands tied in the dog cage, you might actually find the show funny. You generally lose your sense of time as the movie continues. Finally, he gets up, reaching and closing the window. So, the reason why he doesn't initiate what he does when I first recorded it is because I was not compliant. You notice a new butt has been added to the coffee table, just an inch from the ashtray. He walks past you, passing, pausing to peer into the dog cage. I'm going to bed. Great! We love that. Finally, maybe without him here, you can figure out how to escape. Good night. Sweet dreams. I hope you have all the nightmares. And then he turned off the lights, leaving you alone. Sleeping in the crate is hard. It's uncomfortable, firstly. 
Oh, he didn't give us a blanket. He did that last time. Your limbs are curled constantly. No room to stretch aside, laying on your back and bending so your feet are upright. Plus, you've tried to bend the cage bars or push against the door, but it's no use. This thing is focused on keeping you inside. Part of you isn't sure what to do. But you can feel something in your cl in your chest. You're unsure what? Fear? Anger? I don't know. You're strong. You won't let this get to you. I don't know why that even was there. It was so fast. I don't know if I would have picked it anyway. You're better than that. You take a couple deep breaths, knowing full well that you haven't... You have to find a way to get out of here. You need some sleep. How else would you have to clear your mind and get the fuck out of here? You squeeze your eyes shut, hoping that does the trick. Your mind is buzzing with all of, with all this information. It slowly starts to drip away. And then you fall asleep. Generate. What was that? Yo. You're being touched. Yo! What? You sit up realizing the cage door is open. Hey, sugar. I missed you. You're in the next room. Stop. He seems to be holding something. I got you some clothes. They're probably big on you, but that's alright. We can focus on getting you a proper wardrobe in the future. You aren't sure what to do, especially with your hands taped up like this. Oh, right. He reaches down, using a knife from his pocket to cut the tape on your hands. You let out a small sound of delight at your freedom. He holds a hand out, as if to offer to help you out of the cage. Take his hand. You take his hand. His hand is warm. Calloused, yet he holds yours with care. He pulls you out of the cage. There we go. The clothes are sloppily folded, resting on the arm of the couch for you. You put them on, nervous as you watch him. Take a seat. I'll make us something to eat. He makes something? You find yourself staring at him as he heads into the kitchen. You decide not to sit. You walk around his cramped living room, noticing his TV, then shelves. The guitar in the corner catches your eye. You walk up to it, taking a little look. You turn your head a little, wondering what would happen if you were to try to use it as a weapon. Then you lay your eyes on a shelf. A salt rock, some Batman figures, and trinkets. And then a bong. I mean, you aren't shocked, but still. You jump when you notice he's next to you, staring. Hey, sweetheart. Hungry? He offers you a bowl, the bowl of cereal to you. Your stomach rumbles. He has a second bowl in his hand. He guides you to his sofa, clearing off a space for your bowl on the coffee table if you choose. If you so choose. He eats his cereal on his lap. As you both eat, you can't help but notice the striking size difference between the two of you. His bowl looks normal size in his hands. So he paused at the TV remote before grabbing it, turning it on. Some sort of game show is on. But he isn't pleased as he clicks through the channels. You don't seem to recognize any of them, and you wonder if it had to do with his strange box slash hard drive plugged into his TV. He pauses on one, loudly bouncing music playing as he debates. There's three panels, three people seem to be arguing as the announcer continues to raise the bid. Bid. Or you can continue watching, he flips through a couple more. What was that? Stopping on the price is right. You eat the cereal. The sweet crisps and marshmallows hit your tongue. Marshmallows? Ugh, I hate- If that's Lucky Charms, no thank you. Lucky Charms is gross. That shit gets soggy, but not a good soggy. And marshmallows and cereal? You can miss me with that. It's well delightful. You really needed this. He finishes his food before you, setting the empty bowl down on the coffee table. I'm visiting my sister today. That's nice. Don't know why you just blurred that out, but okay. He watches the TV looking straight ahead. You take another bite of cereal, fishing for more marshmallows. I guess I'll ask about her. What's your sister like? He seems surprised by your question. She's great. A really cool person. She lives, like, out in the boonies. Why aren't you as cool as her, then? 
Yeah, both kidnap people or something? He adjusts his sitting position so he so he's more comfortable. Leg searching far under the coffee table. I visit her weekly. She gets sort of lonely. Strangely enough, by the tone of his voice, you take it as he's the one who gets lonely. Hmm. He stands, turning to look at you. Your mind races as you realize. And you realize that with him leaving, you'll be stuffed back into that damn cage. You have to think. Convince him. Please let me stay out of the cage while you're gone. He stares at you, confused, presumably. I'll do anything. <laughs> Let's get you in the cage, okay? Damn. He grabs your hand. You begrudgingly follow him. Who knows what would happen if you fought back right now. You attempt to climb up into the cage. He, pu he pushes you in. That pencil disappeared from earlier. <laughs> you watch as he shuts and locks it. He sort of leans down, looking at you playfully. Maybe I'll bring you some takeout. And before I forget... He turns on the TV, sliding the remote through the top bars. You grab it. Enjoy yourself. He blows you a kiss before turning and heading to the door. This is so unfortunate. The door slams, shaking the whole house. You realize this is the first time you've been alone here. Genuinely alone. The silence is slowly getting to you. You wait and wait and wait for him. For hours, actually. Time feels like a drippy illusion. It's strange. How long have you been in here? Two days, right? Sort of. It feels more like a week or an hour. You can't exactly tell. Then you feel large arms around you hoist you up. Someone in a, in a jacket was by the door. What is happening right now? With a grunt, you feel them hoist you up. Strange woman? Hey, hey, where do you think you're going? He drags you towards a truck. He's also pretty tall. Oh my gosh! I heard you were giving my baby brother some trouble. Shut up! Stop! D Silence! I'm pissed right now. I'm angry. Let's have a nice chat in the car. I don't want to talk to you. What? What? I don't want to talk to her. No. You survived. She took care of it. By doing what? By doing what? Absolutely nothing. Exactly. What am I supposed to do? Go to the gas station again. Let's be super great. Literally, let's be the best person we can be, ever. Open the door. W w let's see what happens. <laughs> you briefly throw open the door, arms up and ready to fight the person attempting to break into your place. Did I say palace? No way. You're startled by the large man behind it. He must be at least 5'6". Six, six, Honestly, he seems just as startled as you are, just by the fact that you opened it. He doesn't waste any time. Sorry, love. What? One hand has a crowbar, the other has a strange rag. Chloroform. He seems to be debating between the two before dropping a crowbar. He grabs your hand, head, with the, the lo with a large hand, smashing the rag into your mouth and nose. It stinks. Why do I say that? So we're back here. Of course. Let's do nothing. Just stay quiet. Accept the food. I don't see what the problem is. Wait quietly. He roots around for something on his bed, but he doesn't seem to find what he's looking for. Aha! You retrieve something from the side table. He sits back down in front of you. Here we go. You know, a friend of mine says there are bad... These are bad for your teeth. He offers something to you. An energy drink. I don't want that damn drink! It's not exactly water. He seems embarrassed, but attempts to keep his smile. I'll be honest. As much as I love you, I don't think I trust you enough to go... To my kitchen without you tied up for me you what you could do then is tie me back up and give me a nice glass of water i don't want this shit so to keep you safe and to put my mind at ease i present to you he makes a goofy voice embalming fluid he chuckles i don't know i like them you look at the drink huh you open it taking a sip how is it it burns but you feel good it isn't bad. Good. He sits back down in front of you, sighing warmly. Eat up the rest of the chicken tenders and eat your fries. He watches intently. I'm done. 
Can't eat anymore. It it to its. It was tasty as great value chicken tenders can be. He takes the plate, sitting up with a small smile. He leans, duct taping your hands back together. There you go. Now I was thinking we could go watch a movie. I don't know what you like, but I was thinking we could browse to find something both we enjoy. We both enjoy. Okay, so that's that. Um, go along with it. You decide to play along. Well, we'll have to have a look. You attempt to smile and try to convince him. He falls for the bait. Yeah, that sounds good. He leans ahead, grabbing your shoulders and hoisting you up to stand. Your legs feel like jello. Can you walk? No. He asks this softly, voice terrifyingly caring. You can feel it pick at your sanity. Yeah, I can. He nods, guiding you to his door before opening it. Down the hall, you make it to his living room. You look around, and then he pats a large cage next to his next to his sofa. It's huge, probably meant for a large dog. Right. You know, this is for your own good, right? You move, sitting on the sofa to your right. What's the point of that? From the view, you can see him very well. And the bars are in the way of the TV. He turns it on, looking through what looks to be a drive he has connected to his TV. Okay, we know that. Huh? What is this? He smokes watching the TV. You know, Degenerate, I only want what's best for you. I know it seems kind of silly, but I've been called a hopeful romantic. What? What do you do? You decide to look over the cage for weak spots, but your hands are still tipped behind your back. Your knees begin to ache from the bars at the bottom, biting into them. It's torture. Mental torture. Okay, we know this. What I mean is... He stops mid-sentence. Oh shit. He seems startled. He's gonna ask me for... Okay. How about this time we just say no? Crazy? No thanks. You too startled by the question to yell or anything. He shrugs, smiling a little, as he brings it to his lips. Cause I, I don't know. I'm doing something. I just want to do something different. Holding it to his mouth, looking really silly as he does. He sits back down out of view. What kind of imprisonment is this? Is he crazy? He must be crazy. Some crazy drunken fool. Who know? What, who now has the dangerous combo of buzzed and high? You know, I really like you. I promise it'll make sense in the end. Will it? It should make sense off rip. He turns the movie up a bit louder, enjoying it. You don't know what to say. He's a crazy freak, that's what. But an hour and a half passes when he finally gets up from his seat, closes the window and turns the TV off. He's gonna be like, I'm going to bed. He walks past you, pausing. Yeah. Yep. As I said. Now we are alone. Again. Let's cry this time. He is well up in your eyes. This is literal hell, huh? What did you do to deserve this? Well, we went to a gas station to go get some food. Or not even, we just returned back to our hometown. Fuck going to get food from a gas station. We ended up going back to our hometown for some reason. You curl up, tears streaming down your face. There's no escape. You sniffle, crying for a long time. You aren't sure what you want anymore. With a jolt, you shake your head. No, get yourself together. You blink a few times. You need some sleep. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Hey, I missed you. Got some clothes. Don't really care about that. Let's take his hand. See what happens. Push you out of the cage. There we go. Yep, we know all this. Let's sit down this time. I don't know what exploring the room does. We already know this. Before you can investigate any further, he comes up to you. Hope you like sugar. What? He sits down, two bowls in hand as he offers you one. You take it, you're sh Did you just give me a bowl of sugar? What? As you both eat, you can't help but notice the striking size difference between the two of you. Yes, we know this. Okay, so it's cereal again. Why do you say sugar? Um, ask about how long he'll be gone. You find yourself chewing on your bite, watching him. 
Just a couple hours. She's not really the visiting type. He laughs a little before watching you. A couple hours? Nah. Last time I was sitting there, it was like way more than maybe a couple hours. That's a lot of time to figure out a way to get out of here. He stands... Okay, so this is all... Let's try to convince him this time. Guess it didn't work. He gives us a TV remote, as per usual. Okay, we're back. Did you? Strangely enough. What? He opens the cage, his arms spread. You climb out into his arms. Being in the cage is much worse. You wrap your hand- Oh my gosh, we're in love. Only for the- for, only for his to hold you tight. He squeezes you a little as he smiles ear to ear. You're meant for each other. Oh my gosh. I think I got that the first time. Um... Do nothing. Um, ask him why he's doing this. Take the food. I remember doing most of this. Totally. Uh, yeah. And then I get- we flirt with him, which initiates the scene. Yeah. Oh wait, I didn't do this before. Let's go back. You decide not to try it. Oh, whoops. I actually wanted to. Sorry. Hello? Oh. He just puts me back in the cage. Yes. Shove your... You shove hard, your hands slipping between the bars. Oh shit. Your wrist is pinching against the bars, but it... But you just continue to try to get the padlock off somehow. You feel the beat of sweat th roll down your forehead from an intense feeling that you might escape. After a few moments of trying, you realize the attempt is useless. Now your hand is stuck. How will you get out of the bars? You try to pull it first, but it shakes the cage. That's a bit loud. You shiver, reaching slowly with your free hand, trying to pull the bars so you can pull your hand out. It doesn't seem to work. Your wrists are starting to turn red from the pressure. Good. You gulp, starting to panic. How the fuck do I get out? Your arm... Your arm up and twisted strangely. It's extremely uncomfortable. Fuck it. You pulled hard and with a strange rattle, your wrist is freed from the bars. Oh fuck. You clutch it in your chest quickly. It hurts. You curl up, letting out a small breath of pain. You must have dislocated it or something. <laughs> Great. I knew it was a bad idea. I did anyway. Um. Take his hand. You reach out for him as he takes your hand, pulling it to help you out. His eyes widen. He pulls you close, holding up your hand. He seems to examine it, noticing a large, dark bruise. You wince at his grip. How'd you- How did this get here? <laughs> I'm not gonna blame him. That's stupid. Be honest. Oh. Um. Well, I got my arm stuck in the cage. And when I pulled it out, I guess I managed to sprain it. Well, we'll have to figure it out together, yeah? It looks just like a sprain, which means there's not much we can do. My dad would have just told me to rub some dirt on it. Ew? He sort of laughs, letting off- letting go of your hand. You sigh in relief. I was going to have you help me make breakfast, but with your hand like that, it would just be silly. You get, dr you get dressed. I'll make us something to eat. Damn it! He feels strange with the his pet names. Dang it! Dang it! Because I did that stupid thing. Oh, I could follow him! New stuff! You aren't sure what it is, but you decide to follow him instead. You enter the kitchen watching as he seems to be preparing two large bowls of cereal. It's a sweet kind. Sort of stuff that'll rot your teeth. He's... Why do we keep talking about teeth? He's humming some pop song you can barely remember. He finally noticed you turning to face you. Hey, sugar. He looks you over, turning his head a little. What's wrong? You aren't even sure why you came in here. He watches you with uh, kind eyes, a soft, concerned expression, despite the ever-constant smile. Ask to help. Do you need any help? With breakfast? No, I'm fine. He bothers me. I'm bothered. You both sort of look at each other. 
like some sort of fucked up staring contest. He looks over you. What is he thinking? He looks away putting something back into the fridge. Then he walks up to you. He leans. Oh, he's eye level with you. A strange little smile is playing on his lips. You've come to know this as his thinking face. You're cute. Thank you? I mean, I fuck am I supposed to say to that? He reaches out, giving your cheek a soft squeeze before standing straight. I like when you're like this. All sweet. He sort of laughs. It really reminds me that this was a good decision. He offers you a bowl of cereal. Your stomach growls. Go to the living room with this. I'll sit with you. Yeah. Something's wrong with him. You listen to him going to the living room with your bowl. Aren't sure what to do. You sit down waiting for him to accompany you. He comes up, a bowl in his hand as he sits. You watch him as he takes the first bite. Yep. Um, TV again? Mm-hmm. I feel like this is like the end result every time, right? Or can we get past this? Um, ask about her. What's your sister like? She seems so- yeah. We know. Convince him. <gasps> you realize begging like this isn't going to work. He thinks you like him back. You decide to switch up your pitch. I could get the dishes done. Of course, maybe some laundry. I can help out around here if I'm stuck- I can't help out around here if I'm stuck in the cage, right? He stares a little. You're right. I'm trusting you, alright? Oh my gosh. Mission accomplished, everybody. He walks up giving you a small kiss on the cheek. Be good, okay? <laughs> I'm about to do something devious. He heads out the front door. The way he shuts it, shaking the house. He, you stand awkwardly. What do you do? Look around, run away. I highly doubt we could run away, but I will save it here so that I could see what happens. Let's save it here. I want to go back there. Uh, look around first. Let's not do the dangerous one first. First you look around the room again. Then you look around the kitchen. Oh. In his bedroom. As you're walking the floor the floorboards squeak beneath the carpet. You dig around snoop snooping as you look for anything that could help you. Then you find it in his dresser, a gun. Wow. Yes! Wow. Uh, wow. Oh my gosh. Be bad. You pick it up. We're not good today. Mm, yeah. Your heart beats. It's really heavy. So it must be loaded, right? You look around before- Right? What do you mean? Check! You look around before hiding it in your waistband. You continue to look around exploring the house before deciding what to do. When you're back in the living room, you take a seat on the couch. What to do? You turn on the TV, flipping through some channels. You wonder what sort of KO box this is. Some of the shows seem perfectly normal, others are just vile and poorly put together. Some of the stuff you see, you convince yourself it's just a horror movie playing. As you flick around, you land on some Hallmark movie, not in English. You also notice he uses English subtitles. You wonder why. Won't matter. You hear him fiddle with the lock before opening the door. You watch holding the gun. He looks at you. What you doing? You get a little excited? You notice with your with how your hand is in your pants. Looks sort of strange. You whip out the gun quick to aim it at him. It's if it's not loaded, I swear to the to the Lord above. His smile drops, but is is it's delayed. It's a delayed reaction of his as if he had to put some thought into it. What are you doing, sweetheart? I'm about to kill your ass. That's what I'm about to do. Your finger slams the trigger, firing the gun without a second thought. It hits him in the chest. Wow, I, I didn't... He coughs. I didn't expect you to do that. He sort of just stares at you. <laughs> Don't you love me? Why did you think that? <laughs> because I offered to wash your dishes? Stop it. He's crying. Or laughing. We can't really tell as he sinks to his knees, then collapses to on the floor. He's still breathing. But a large puddle of blood begins to bloom. He's going to die. You shoot again. You won't let him live. Nope. 
One shot, two shot, three shots, four shots. All I hear is gunshots. This is where the fun stops. Bodies drop, hit the floor. M <laughs> Music's off, party stops. Everyone hit the door. Everybody hit the door. Somebody's looking shots off the <laughs> That's the perfect way to end this episode. That was amazing. We did it. We won, everybody. Clap it up. Clap it up. Are you serious? We basically won. Yeah. Yeah. That. That's the perfect way to end the episode. Literally. Maybe next we'll go to the park. Hopefully that's just as fun as going to the gas station. If you guys are ready for that, uh, you, you guys know what to do. You know? Turn on that notification. It'll come. It's coming soon, definitely, to um to the channel. So yeah. With that being said, I will see you all next time. Perfect ending, literally.